Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be installing new rear brakes on my 2009 Honda Civic EX. This car has disc brakes in the rear. If you're looking for a video on drum brakes, I have that video also, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Today's video is for the rear disc brakes, and I'm only showing the driver's side. The passenger side is going to be the same exact process. Also, when you're finished installing the brakes, always pump that brake pedal to ensure you have a firm pedal before you take it on the road. I'll start this video by showing you what pads that I recommend that you get. All right, so I'm using Honda pads, uh, part number 43022-S5AJ02. And the reason I use them comes with the grease, comes with the shims, comes with genuine parts that fit your car and work awesome. Everything you need. So let's get the wheel off the ground. So right there, that's a good location to jack it up. And we need to jack it up high enough to get the jack on the frame. Let's just keep on jacking. And that looks about the right height. And then we just need to take the jack stand. And if you look right here, this metal sticks down a little further and it's a little thicker. This is where you're gonna put your jack stand and this is also your jacking location in case you ever get a flat tired. So remember that. And then we'll just let the jack down. I'm also going to put a couple of two by fours, one under this wheel and then also one under this wheel. Now I can pull the parking brake off and my wheel should spin. All right, so let's get that wheel off and start our brakes. I also don't need the jack anymore. All right, so these are the bolts I'm going to take out. This one, this is the parking brake. And if you come over here, this one here, this is the parking brake. And then this one here, this one's the brake hose. So I remove these. It just makes things easier for me. Now, for those of you out there that say you didn't need to take those out, it's just easier for me. All right, so we're going to take off this one here. Parking brake. Get that by hand. All right, that one's off. Be this one here. Let's go ahead and get that one off. And we can probably pull that one off by hand too. All right, get this out of there. And then the other one is over here. Let's go ahead and get that one off. There we go. All right, so you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench and a 12 millimeter wrench. So the 17 millimeter here is just gonna kind of hold this back bolt. And then this one. This. Uh, it's loose. Let me go down to the bottom one here. Just kind of pull them together. There it is. Let's see if I can pull them out by hand. I mean, these came out pretty easy. This is a California car. If you notice, there's no, no rust on it. So yours might be a little bit more difficult. 
if you've got a lot of rust and stuff like that, but I'm pretty lucky I live in California. My car, I don't think it has any rust on it. And for the guy out there that said I need to wear gloves, I wish I could, but when I film, I have to stop the camera and then start it back up again. So it's either get nice shots for you or have my hands clean. So now that I got the bolts off, I'm just gonna pull it, pull it straight out. And see how much room I have now? It's because I took everything off. I'm just gonna set it down here. And that's it. Now we're gonna take our brake pads out. If you made it this far in the video, take a minute and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. That's what this channel is all about. It's helping each other out. Now, back to the video. And these are just gonna rock out. That's what she looks like. And then this one here, I just wanna show you that the sensor is towards the bottom, okay? The reason for that is as the rotor spins, you want the edge to hit that sensor first, the rotating edge, if that makes sense. So the other thing is I have never turned these rotors. These rotors, it's got 160,000 miles, They've never been off, they've never been turned, and I'm not turning them again. I still get 40,000 miles, 45,000 miles out of these pads. Um, and I use Honda pads, they don't squeak. All right, I've got everything laid out here. Here's the old pad compared to the new pad, and then Here's the shims, here's the shim here, the shim, and the sensors gonna go on the same way. And when I say sensors, I mean these. They're gonna go at the bottom. So here's the grease. This is supplied by Honda. That's why I buy Honda stuff, because it comes with everything and it's all the right stuff. So here's what you do with this. And a little goes a long way on here. So you just take it right here. Put it on there. And what you want to do is spread it around. Like that. And then take the shim. Perfect, keep the pad clean, and then do the same thing on the other side. A little goes a long way. We'll put it on here, might even work better. This is a little smaller, so. There we go, put it here, snap it in. And we're done with our pads, so we can move our old ones out of the way. Next, we're going to remove these little shims. They should come off pretty easy. And then this one too. We're just removing them so we can just kind of clean them up a little bit. And then we'll pop them back on and we'll put a little uh, grease on there too. This one's kind of being a bear a little bit. Let's get it in here. There we go. So I have this little funky little tool right here. I couldn't tell you where I got it. Um, I've probably had this for 30 years, but I've just got it on a shorty little ratchet. So these little tabs right here are gonna fit into here. 
And when I'm done, this needs to be at the same spot, up and down. So these just don't push in, they have to turn and they're gonna turn clockwise. So let me show you how that works. It's got to do with the uh, emergency brake mechanism. Let me just get those in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just turn it. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. They actually have tools that work a whole lot better, but this works a whole lot better than nothing. See it turning. 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 It's turning. I mean, you can get in there with a screwdriver too and do it little by little. This just works a little better for me. I'm trying to get you a a shot while I'm doing this too. Let's keep going here, a little bit more. Maybe one more. So that almost looks perfect, but I think I'd need to go just a little more. Uh, that looks pretty good. Go a little more, let me show you. So you see this little tab on here? That's what needs to slide in. So I'll show you more when I put this on, but that looks That looks pretty good. We're gonna go with that. So last thing here, I just wanna clean these up a little bit too. All right, so these are going back on. They just kinda pop in. And then here's the top one. He's also just kinda pop in. All right, so now as far as the brake pads, we just wanna put a little bit of this on the tips of the brake pads. So I'm gonna pull a little bit off here and we're gonna put it right here, right here, and right here. And then same thing on this side, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna go here. I'll set that aside. I'll grab the other one. Same thing there, there, there. And then here, here, here. Any extra, I'll just lay right there. And lay right there. So in this stuff, just a little bit goes a long way. So last thing, I'm just going to make sure there's no oil or anything on the pad on there too. And I'll just wipe them down with a little brake clean. All right. So a couple more things here before we pop our pads on. We're going to clean off the rotor a little bit. I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to turn it. Same thing on the other side. Turn it. And you got to make sure your sliders are nice and slidey. You see that? Now, I didn't need to put any silicone or anything in there because they're, they're all good. Now we're going to take our pad, the top end, and we'll just slide it in. And get the other pad. Bring it over. Light it in. Now I'll take the caliper and notice how much room I have now. And then let's just get it over here. 
Watch your sliders. Just put it in. Get our bolts. Get them started by hand. You get the wrench. Looks like it's going in now. But yeah, definitely make sure it's gonna go in easy and don't cross thread it. So I'm gonna just get this kind of snug and then I'll go get a torch spec and torque them down. All right, so I'm gonna torque the caliper bolts here. It says 17 on the caliper to the caliper bracket, but I'm going 20 foot-pounds, so I'm going to hold that nut. There it is. All right, let's get the bottom one. All right, we're all good. Let's get the brake hose back where it belongs. And then also the parking brake. Bracket here. I don't have a torque spec for you for this. Just don't break them off. And then the final parking brake bracket here. Tighten it down and then let's get that wheel on there and get it torqued. Wheel torque, these are torqued at 80. Don't skip this step. Two years ago, I had some tires done on my Honda Element. I was driving down a hill and my steering wheels doing this. I knew exactly what happened. They over torqued my wheels. I brought the car home. I checked it. They were at 120 foot pounds. That was way too much. It should have been 80. I loosened them up. I retorqued my wheels. I've never had a problem with my rotor since. So always torque your wheels. So you want to do them at 80 and you want to do it on a star pattern. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.